Here's another lesson for page 1125 in Algebra 2. We're going to look at pages 4 and 5. Simplifying fractional expressions. And um, <clears throat> they show an example there at the top, which kind of covers several of the points that I want to make in this video. And um, I picked two problems that I think are similar, maybe have some tough things in them that you'll see in some of the other problems. So we'll, let's dive in here and talk about what we're going to do to, to simplify these. Whenever we look at something like this, we want to ask ourselves, are there some common factors that I can factor out first? So in this numerator, I can see, oh yeah, there's a three in both of them. So I can factor out the three and have three times x plus four. All right. x squared minus six. You ever had to factor that? It's the difference of perfect squares. x squared and 16 is four squared. So we set up the two parentheses and we put the x in the front because x times x is x squared. 4 times 4 is 16. And then what we do is plus and minus. One is positive, one is negative. And remember, you can always check it by doing the FOIL method. First outer, inner, last. And when we do that, these two middle terms are going to cancel each other out. Positive 4x, negative 4x. So look for patterns like this as you're solving the rest of the problems. And now you can see that this quantity here will cancel this quantity. We have the same thing top and bottom, so those two terms will, boom, cancel out. And there's nothing more you can do. That one's done. All right, over here, sometimes I'll have students look at this and say, oh, I can do x to the third and x squared and subtract and get, you know, x on the bottom and in here, you know, minus y on the bottom. So 1 over x minus y. No, we cannot do that. All right. <clears throat> How are the rules? Or what are the rules that we need to follow? We need to factor. So this top one is just like this one we did here. Okay. So that's easy. x plus y, x minus y. But now this denominator, let's talk about that. Do you remember this from a previous pace? When we have the difference or even the sum of cubes, there is a template that we have to follow. And if you don't have it memorized, let me write it out here for you because you're going to use it a couple times on this page. We're going to first do f minus s, parentheses, f squared, plus fs plus s squared. So you know what is the f and the s? The f stands for the first term and the s stands for the second term. That's what I use, okay? f and s are first and second. So we have this. We can follow this pattern by plugging in x every time we see an f and y every time we see s, okay? So we're going to take this pattern right here and how do I remember this? If this is minus here, then we're going to do minus in this one. And then the next one is always the opposite of this one. The last one is always, always, always positive. Okay, here we go. Parentheses, I'm going to do x and y, so x minus y. All right. Parentheses, x squared plus xy. First times the second, plus the second squared, which is the y, squared. Ah! All we did is follow the pattern and plug in x and y in place of the f and s. Boom! Now, we look at these and we see, is there anything that will cancel top to bottom? I think you see it. There's one term that will cancel top and bottom, and then whatever is left, that's going to be our numerator in the answer. And then it looks like this should become the denominator in the answer. All right, so it's like a puzzle. Um, we're just doing a little factoring. We've done this type of factoring in previous paces. You even did some of it way back in Algebra 1, so hopefully this is not a hard lesson. And always look first to see, is there a common factor that you can factor all the way out to get a parenthesis, okay? And then if you end up with a difference of perfect squares or cubes, just follow the pattern to factor those and then look for terms that you can fact, uh, cancel top to bottom and simplify as far down as you can. All right.